Selamat pagi, nama saya Chihiro. In my last video, I talk about how I met Julian first time. Today, I want to talk about why I want to start a farm in Malaysia. I feel it was fate to meet Julian. To be honest, I had a dream to start a farm for a long time since I was a university student. My major was agriculture economics. I was working for IT after graduation for three years and then I have started preparing to be a farmer in Malaysia. I have visited many farms in Malaysia. Through my experience visiting farms, I was getting my idea to improve Malaysian agriculture and how I can contribute to the industry. I have four goals to achieve through my farming business. First, I will design my farm for one woman like me to be able to manage. Most of the time, I talk with someone who doesn't know about me so much. For example, people say it's very hot outside. I know it's really hot. I was working at some farms in Malaysia before, and I often walk outside in daytime easy for around one hour. So at least I know how hot it is in Malaysia. And I'm confident that I can overcome those difficulties because I know some technical tips and ideas to make farming more easy. Of course, there are many things I need to ask someone help, but I would like to make farmers' work be easier and happier. If I could successfully manage my farm in easy and happy ways, I think more people want to become a farmer, and we can supply food for ourselves, for self-sufficiency, not depending on other countries. That's my second goal, actually. The second goal is make Malaysia become stronger by self-sufficiency, not depending on other countries. Nowadays, food becomes more expensive, right? It's not only foods, but any materials and goods are getting expensive all over the world. One of the reasons why food price becomes higher are wheat export from Russia is restricted. Russia is not just a big exporter of wheat, but is also producing a big amount of uh, ammonium nitrate that is used for fertilizer. Russia produces twice that of fertilizer in the world, but they have been stopping export of ammonium nitrate for two months. That's why all food getting expensive. This is just an example. To be self-sufficient, it's important to adopt natural farming. If we use natural farming method to produce foods, we don't need to import fertilizer and no need to depend on other countries because we don't use any chemicals and fertilizer in natural farming. We just use materials which we can obtain locally. But make a sustainable farm in long term, preventing soil erosion and nutrient outgrowth. Every time I see soil erosion and land is bare, I feel very sad. Soil erosion, especially on slopes, are very dangerous. In Malaysia, heavy rain is not rare case. It's more often than Japan. Rain flows away with soils as well as the nutrients inside of the soil. But nowadays, there are many people starting planting durians, so that's why soil erosion happens. Once the soil erodes and nutrients are thrown away, it takes long time to recover it. Fruit trees are taking more time to bear fruits, and farmers end up using chemical fertilizer to boost their harvest. But chemical fertilizer doesn't make nutrient-rich soil. It will affect after many years to our children and our grandchildren. Soil erosion doesn't happen if people follow natural farming method. I don't think most of the landowners consider how they keep the soil and prevent nutrient outflow. Since you are watching this video, if you emphasize my goals and you want to buy a farmland to keep for your children, why don't we collaborate and work together? If you are interested in my passion, please read the description below. Thank you for watching this video. Hello video in the bagus, shira press ka button, dan jangan lupa press subscribe button di bawah ya. Jumpa lagi.